You are such an eyesore. Thud. As my consciousness fades, I'm pushed by my mother, landing on my backside on the cold storage room floor. My mother looks down at me, unable to stand, and snorts in derision. It's a child's duty to honor their parents, right? Stay put in this cold storage. Oh, don't worry, I'll let you out after Robert's funeral. Today is the funeral of my beloved father. I had decided to attend no matter what. I never imagined it would come to this. Even if I scream, the towel stuffed in my mouth makes it pointless. Sweating profusely, I desperately move my bound hands and feet, but I can only wriggle like a worm. Seeing me struggle seems to amuse my mother, who approaches me, laughing out loud. She crouches down in front of me and shakes a familiar-looking supplement bottle. You're such a fool, aren't you? You drank it without even noticing I swapped the contents. I can't believe anyone would do something like this. Moof. My mother's finger pokes my forehead. Her flashy nails are completely inappropriate for a funeral. Even as I glare at her in anger, she doesn't seem to care at all. I'm going to say I was the one taking care of Robert. I can't have you saying anything weird. This way, I'll get all the relative stress and the inheritance. My mother laughs loudly as she leaves the storage room. I have no choice but to cry helplessly. On the cold, hard concrete, I drift into a sleep as deep as mud. It all started with a phone call. What? Dad had a stroke. I hurriedly finished up work and headed to the hospital. Even in the taxi on the way there, my heart was pounding faster than ever before. I had the driver drop me off right at the entrance and rushed into the hospital. The treatment seemed to be over, and my father was lying in bed, connected to many tubes. Although he survived, he was left with disabilities. He could manage basic conversations, but communication was difficult. He also couldn't do much on his own anymore. So, I started going back and forth between my house and my parents' home to take care of him. Fortunately, the house had been made wheelchair accessible for my late grandmother, so it was convenient for caregiving. I had also been divorced for a few years and was living alone. My job was remote, so compared to others, caregiving was a bit easier for me. Balancing work and caregiving wasn't easy, but I could manage for the sake of my beloved father. However, there was one problem. Nancy, I'm going out, so take care of things. What? Wait. Where are you going? Doesn't matter where. See ya. My mother left the house, reeking of perfume. The problem was my mother. She loved flashy things and had been promiscuous with men since she was young. Apparently, my father got caught up with her too. Their relationship was always strained, but they got married because she got pregnant with me. When my father told me this, it troubled me, but he showered me with enough love to make up for it. However, my mother was different. Maybe she felt that marriage restricted her freedom and fun, or she simply didn't like that I wasn't like her. She hardly took care of me at all. It's fair to say she abandoned her responsibilities as a mother. I didn't like her either, so I wasn't particularly hurt by it. When I got divorced, my father finally decided to divorce her too. Seeing the end of his life approaching, he decided to spend his remaining time for himself. I agreed with that, and I had plenty of evidence of my mother's infidelity, so it was just a matter of finalizing things with the lawyer. But in the midst of it, my father collapsed. I sighed as I looked at my father's sleeping face. I thought I'd finally be free of her. How could she leave my father in this condition and go somewhere? She's out of her mind. Thinking that, I adjusted the blanket over my father's body. A few months later, my father passed away. I looked at his small body lying on the bed. There were so many things to do for the funeral, but I couldn't move. 
The quiet was shattered by my mother's booze roughened voice. Hey, what about the inheritance? What are you talking about? It's important, isn't it? So, how much do I get? If we weren't in front of my father, I would have slapped her. Suppressing the anger surging through me, I turned to my mother. We'll discuss it properly after the funeral. I'm going to call Michelle. Oh, that workaholic woman is coming too. You deal with her, it's a pain. Ignoring my mother's rude remark, I called Michelle on my smartphone. Michelle is my father's sister, now working overseas. My father's and Michelle's father, my grandfather, passed away early. My grandmother worked herself to the bone every day in his place. So Michelle took care of my father most of the time. Michelle was an excellent student, but after graduating high school, she went to work immediately to earn money for my father's education. Nancy, it's been a while. Is something wrong? As always, Michelle greeted me cheerfully, and I told her about my father's death. They were really close siblings, and even over the phone, I could feel her disappointment. Got it. I'll be there by tomorrow morning. I'll pick you up at the airport. Don't worry. I'll have my daughter's husband pick me up. You need to rest, Nancy. But... You're the one who'll be leading the funeral, right? If you don't rest when you can, you'll collapse next. Michelle's words made me realize. Indeed, I couldn't let my mother lead the funeral. And if I collapsed now, who would see my father off? I thanked Michelle and hung up, then went back to my mother. She was watching TV, bored, fiddling with her hair. I'll be leading the funeral. What? That's all. I'm taking a shower first since I've got to get up early tomorrow. Without waiting for my mother's response, I left the room. I quickly took a shower and, while reviewing the plans for tomorrow, eating a microwavable meal I had stored. In the kitchen, there were dishes prepared for my father and recipes for his special diet. Thinking I wouldn't need these anymore made my chest tighten. But I reminded myself I didn't have time to be sentimental and hurriedly finished my meal. Knowing this alone wouldn't give me balanced nutrition, I took some vitamin supplements from the kitchen and went to sleep. Og. When I woke up, there was a kerosene container in front of me. Why is something like this in the bedroom? I tried to get up but found I couldn't move. I wanted to call out, but something like a towel was stuffed in my mouth, preventing me from making any sound. As I moved my eyes, trying to understand my situation, I heard footsteps in the distance. I tensed up, listening to the sound, and the door suddenly opened. Oh dear, you're already awake. It's cold in the storage room, isn't it? Hearing those words, I finally realized I was in the storage room. My mother, wearing a brand new black dress, walked toward me with her heels clicking. You are such an eyesore. It's a child's duty to honor their parents, right? Stay put in this cold storage. Oh, don't worry. I'll let you out after Robert's funeral. She looked down at me, seemingly amused. Even if I screamed, the towel in my mouth made it pointless. Sweating all over, I desperately tried to move my bound hands and feet, but could only wriggle like a worm. Seeing my struggle seemed to amuse her even more as she laughed and approached me. She crouched down and shook a familiar-looking vitamin supplement bottle in front of me. It was the supplement I regularly took. You're such a fool, aren't you? You drank it without even noticing I swapped the contents. Her unbelievable words made my blood run cold. I can't believe anyone would do something like this. Moof. The contents are the medicine Robert used. It has strong sedative effects, so you'll sleep soundly. She poked my forehead with her finger. Her flashy nails were completely inappropriate for a funeral. Even as I glared at her in anger, she didn't seem to care at all. 
I'm going to say I was the one taking care of Robert. I can't have you saying anything weird. This way, I'll get all the relatives dressed and the inheritance. Laughing loudly, my mother left the storage room. I had no choice but to cry helplessly. On the cold, hard concrete, I drifted into a sleep as deep as mud. Nancy, Nancy, can you hear me? Someone was shaking my shoulder, and I opened my eyes. There was a man with a relieved expression I didn't recognize. With his large hand, he removed the towel from my mouth. Who are you? I'm Michelle's daughter's husband. Nice to meet you. You're safe now. I'm saved. Tears welled up again at that thought. He silently handed me a handkerchief. Seeing the prayer beads on his hand, I remembered something important. Oh no. My father's funeral. The service hasn't started yet. They're waiting for you. Let's go. He helped me into the car, and we headed to the funeral home. When we finally arrived, a shocking scene unfolded before me. I never thought she'd go this far. Michelle stood tall, looking down at my mother, who was sitting in Siza. For some reason, my mother was completely drenched. She was trembling, her face pale, looking down. Noticing my arrival, Michelle rushed over to me. She hugged me and gently rubbed my back. You must have been scared. I'm sorry for being late. No. But what happened here? Well. After locking me up, my mother had gone to the funeral home and introduced herself to the relatives as the host. But Michelle, who had called the previous day, found this suspicious and confronted her. At first, my mother dodged the questions, but as she couldn't remember any of the arrangements and couldn't contact me, Michelle pressed harder. When my mother continued to feign ignorance, Michelle poured a bucket of toy bugs, taken from her grandson, over her head. It was a bold move, typical of Michelle. Mistaking the realistic-looking toys for real bugs, my mother panicked, knocking over a vase and falling in the process. At that point, she confessed to locking you up. Well, with all the noise, everyone had gathered around, so she probably realized she couldn't escape. And now... Michelle stood tall once again in front of my mother. My mother shrank back, looking very uncomfortable. Why did you do this? It's too late to lie now. My boyfriend had debts. I needed money. But if people knew our marriage was over, I wouldn't get anything. Hearing such a pitiful excuse, Michelle and I both slumped our shoulders. Soon, the sound of police sirens could be heard. Later, Nancy, why don't you take a break? I have some delicious cookies. Really? Maybe I will take a break. I was living with Michelle. I sold my parents' house and rented a place near Michelle's daughter's family. Seeing how exhausted I was, Michelle had offered to stay in the States for a while. I thought it might be a burden, but after everything that happened, I was extremely grateful for her support. After that, I underwent a medical examination at the hospital. I was relieved to find there were no abnormalities, but soon after, I had to go through questioning at the police station. There, I recounted everything that had happened. The rope marks on my body and the footage from the security cameras my father had installed in the house served as evidence, leading to my mother's arrest. Apparently, she had enlisted the help of her lover when she locked me up, and that was also clearly captured on camera. I couldn't believe she brought her lover into the house we lived in, but she was someone who didn't understand common decency. To top it off, her lover was also married. Though we couldn't claim damages, we sent a certified letter to his wife. I'm sure they will end up divorcing too. As Michelle was preparing coffee, I brought up a concern. Hey. Are you really sure about covering my living expenses? 
I got all of dad's inheritance, so at least let me. How many times have we talked about this? It's fine. Use it for yourself. Thank you. Michelle smiled warmly. Despite everything that happened, her brightness helped me regain my spirits. As I savored the cookies she had made, memories from the funeral came back to me. By the way, why did you take your grandson's toy? It practically saved us, but... Oh, he loves bugs. And without that toy, he causes a ruckus. But he was chasing other kids around with it, so I had to take it away. That's so like you, Michelle. Your grandson must be no match for you. Exactly. I plan to stay healthy until he becomes an adult. How old is he now? He's four, but he'll turn five next month. Then I need to get him a birthday present. Our little hero who unexpectedly saved us. As I sipped the coffee Michelle had made, I thought about getting him a thick insect encyclopedia.